Hey YouTube, this is The Art of Prepping. Uh, so wh what about different types of bug out retreats? Now, why are we talking about this? Because, well, I think ultimately though, you know, you gotta kinda have a plan on how are you gonna bug out? Especially those people who don't have any real concrete plans, they just have it all in their head. They have a philosophy or an idea, and they think they know what they're gonna do, but they have never even tried it. They never even try to even get to that solution or even, uh, uh, you know, walk in those shoes and even see if their so-called thoughts uh, and plan even works. So, you know, while you're making this plan and while you even try to figure out what you need to do and what not to do, uh, here are some options. You could have an RV camper. Uh, you know, it could be something that you could actually drive that kind of RV or maybe a camper style that you pull like a fifth wheel or maybe like a wagon system. It could be something that's not so mobile though. It could be uh, maybe a converted shed. Uh, these, this is a really good option actually. Uh, you can get any kind of size sheds these days. I mean, as big as a house, uh, it looks like more like a barn, uh, but uh, you know, as small as like a, you know, a six by six or even smaller in some cases. You can get them with lofts. And I mean, it's just, it's almost, uh, I mean, you can get windows in there, full size doors, blah, blah, blah. And you can customize the crud out of them, putting in, uh, you know, a, a chimney and have a wood stove. You could have storage options, beds, and, and, and goes on and on. Uh, you could actually have a garage built on that property. And this is another thing that we need to talk about. Maybe you have a secondary property and it's just a, it's maybe an open field or maybe a woodland area. And, uh, and this is what we're talking about, that if you are trying to find an option of how to, to um, use that piece of property, these are some options, you know, uh, instead of just showing up there and going, okay, uh, what do I need to do now? Um, and also on this piece of property, besides the converted shed, uh, converted garage, or maybe even a storage building, you could have a, a small barn, a uh, converted barn, or even a converted storm shelter. Even a root cellar could be put in, you know? I mean, it would be a little awkward to have this big open field or uh, maybe like a, a woodland area and then have this root cellar out of nowhere. You can just, you know, but it's there and it would probably be very safe against storms, tornadoes, so it's an option. Um, what about like something that is, um, uh, you can, it's portable, but yet it's semi-permanent. Um, so let's look at that. So we have trailers. Um, that's more of a semi-permanent structure. It could be more permanent depending on how you mount it and, and, and anchor it in the ground. But you could get a used trailer, you know. Sometimes they're very affordable. Just make sure that they're clean and there's no bugs in them. Uh, they already have a lot of the systems in there for you. So converted, making conversions would be a very minimum exercise there. Uh, shipping containers. Ah, that's definitely an option that a lot of people use. Uh, once again, you got to be careful about the quality and the type of shipping container, but nonetheless, it's an option. Some people even go with old school buses uh, and they convert them. I think I'd probably stay away from them. Uh, some people even bury them. That might be going too far. Uh, you have to make sure you have structural supports and know what you're doing. You probably want to be an architect to do that. And you got all that glass and that windows in the school bus and you have to probably panel those out and reinforce that so they don't break out. Um, you could also do a car camping or van camping or truck camping, blah, blah, blah. Uh, once again, though, you, you have to practice with that. And you wouldn't want to just show up at your bug out location and go, okay, I'm camping in my car and you've never done it before. So yes, that, that would probably be the most simplest thing, but you're also going to probably have the most limitations. And it would probably be fairly uncomfortable if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, tents. Now, this is uh, definitely one of those you know, portable mobile options that a lot of people think that they would just go camping for a while until the, the emergency subsides. And, and it's a possibility and an option. Um, but if you don't go camping much, uh, you know, at least practice putting your tent together. Uh, you got tarp shelters could be an option. Um, and so what we have here really is a mobile, semi-permanent and permanent shelter options. And hopefully those give you a little bit of idea of some of the things that are available or that tend to get used for this kind of purpose of bugging out and bugging out retreats. Uh, but this is what I would pick personally out of those. Uh, it's my favorite. Uh, the converted shed with loft uh, would probably be the best overall semi-permanent to permanent solution, but depending on how it's uh, anchored in the ground and reinforced, I think there's a lot of options there. For anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand, you can get a very substantial, well-built, all wood uh, you know, shed with full-size doors, uh, windows, a decent metal roof, or even get a shingle roof. You can get all kinds. And uh, you can insulate it, and you can panel out the inside. You can even put drywall in the inside. Put your little wood stove, have a, a sleeping loft up top, and maybe a secondary loft for supplies. 
and then the, 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 you know, down below or the main level uh, could just be uh, a place that you can uh, put your water and food supplies and shelving and uh, in sitting area and, and there you go. Uh, it's a very good option. Uh, so the cost and durability and the storage capabilities uh, are, are excellent on the converted sheds. Uh, and the vehicle could be a backup system. You know, <clears throat> vehicle camping, car camping, van camping, it is a real option. Uh, just know how to do it and how to be efficient. And don't be surprised um, if your car just feels so cramped. Uh, you would probably be a lot better off with a large size van or something and convert that. Or at least have some options to convert it uh, and practice with that. Uh, lastly is... The whole reason we're doing this to have a, a retreat, a bug out retreat, is to have supplies to continue the bug out bag that you started with, especially if you came on foot. Now, that would be the big thing that some of these would not totally work out, especially the mobile options, uh, because you don't have anything, you can't bring anything with you. So if you have to arrive on foot, you definitely would want to have a structure already there, obviously. If not, you're going to be very, very forced into just a few options, uh, such as a debris shelter, which would be horrible, uh, you know, a tarp shelter, which would be better, a tent shelter, which would probably be even better, um, and so forth. So just remember, you need something to continue the resources uh, from your bug out bag because eventually those will run out. It may only last you anywhere from two to seven days, depending on what you have in your bag. So with that, I just want to thank you all for, for all your support and for uh, watching the videos. Any comments, and all comments are welcome, uh, and we'll catch you real soon.